Hello and welcome to Devil's Advocate. Is the Communist Party of India serious when it says it may be time to reconsider support to the UPA government or is that just a tactical ploy? That's one of the key issues I shall discuss today with the General Secretary of the party, A.B. Bharatan. Mr. Bharatan, in April you said, I feel the time will come soon when the left will have to introspect and review the support it is rendering the UPA from outside. Is this a genuine expression of concern, a it sign is. of frustration or are you simply crying wolf yet again? No. It is a bit of serious concern, you see, with thing, the way things are going on. Let me put it like this. Several times in the past, the CPI has threatened to withdraw support and hasn't done so. You did this in February 2005, you did it in March 2005, you did it in February 2006. So I repeat my question. This is genuine. I think, you see, you have picked up some news from here and there. We have never seriously threatened like that. But this time I'm meaning it. It's not just a threat. It's an opinion, but it's a view. My own opinion will not lead to the left withdrawing support. And it's not a question of my party alone withdrawing support. As a left, you see, we gave support from outside. Therefore, if it's a question of withdrawal, the entire left will have to consider it. Let me ask you first about the CPI. I'll come to the left in a moment's time. Is your party behind you when you say that the time has come to reconsider whether you should support the government or not? In fact, the party is ahead of me. They're pushing you? Yeah, they are pushing me. They're telling me again and again, you see, what is this going on? The government doesn't listen to you people. They do not, you see, carry out any demands that you make. Particularly when the price rise took place, you see, people got really frustrated very much. So you're under pressure from your party to move a lot faster? They are. They are pressing me. I think the left as a whole is pressing. What has the UPA done to bring things to this point? After all, you extended support to keep communal forces at bay and to ensure pro policies. What's changed? There were two reasons. One was the communal forces to keep them at bay. Second was to see that some relief is given to the poor. Something is done for them. That was the basis of the common minimum program to which we both adhered. On both these issues, you see, there is a lot of frustration. In fact, we see the BJP is a beneficiary of all the non-performance of the Congress government. You're saying the, Congress, the, government. You're saying the Congress led government is not delivering on the reasons why you chose to support it? That is precisely that. You feel let down? No, you, you just said, isn't it? That one reason was to keep the communal forces at bay. The results of the elections in Punjab, the results of the elections you see in uh, Uttarakhand, Uttarakhand, then in Delhi, corporation elections, in all these, we find that the BJP is uh, benefiting. But far from that being a reason to now reconsider support of the UPA, surely if the BJP's fortunes are rising, you need to reaffirm your support to the UPA, not reconsider it. No, no. According to me, the BJP is not rising because the BJP's health is better now than before. It's not at all. You mean the UPA's deficiencies are helping the BJP? Precisely so. Do you lay the blame squarely on the UPA government? I think so. And squarely on the economic policies Dr. Manmohan Singh is following? Precisely so. Particularly also the price rise. So when people turn around and say that this is just a tactical ploy, that all Mr. Bardhan is doing is to try and exploit the weakness of the UPA and improve his own position. What do you say to them? No, no. I deny it totally, you see. In the first place, I don't expect anything from the UPA as far as my own party is concerned. We have never expressed But are you jockeying anything. in politics or are you really serious? I am serious about but what I am Let me put to you the consequences of your seriousness. To begin with, the Prime Minister doesn't take such threats kindly. In June last year, he said to your own party colleague, D. Raja, why are you issuing statements every day? Why are you not bringing down the government? Isn't there a real danger that if you keep pushing in this way, he may just throw in the towel and give it up? I don't think he's such a coward as to throw in the towel just like that. He is there. And he is very much, you see, a part of the economic policies that are being carried out. I don't absolve him at all. Though I regard him as a very honest and straightforward man, a man of integrity. Personally, you see, I have a lot, lot of respect for him. But as the Prime Minister, I think, of a UPA government which we support from outside and from which we have expectations, he has not measured up to those expectations. You said two very important things. One, you're saying he is critically involved in the economic policies which you intensely dislike. In fact, you see him as the architect of those policies. Is that right? I think it is so. And the second thing you I said... I don't think that these economic policies can go ahead only by Chidambaram wanting it. In other words, Singh, Alu Ali. they go ahead because he wants them. Because he wants them and it, they have his blessings. And the second thing you've said, 
is that you don't think he's such a coward that he'll throw in the towel mm. just because the CPI is pushing him and pushing him hard. Oh, quite so. You're quite sure of that? I'm sure of that. Many other people feel that, in fact, he's coming close to the end of his tether. You disagree? I disagree with that. The second problem... Not because he's a power hunter. Don't misunderstand me. Not because he wants to stick to the chair. But he thinks that he is there, you see, and fulfilling a mission. A mission of so-called economic reforms. So you think that he thinks he's doing a good job, whereas you think he's doing a very bad job. I think he's doing a job which, which is of benefit only to a minority of people, 10% of the Indian population. 90% are ignored. The 90% are being ignored. And 90% measure up to 90 crores in this country. Let me put you the second problem with what you're trying to do and suggest. The CPM, by far the single biggest left party, sure. disagrees. Prakash Karat in public has said that the CPM is not considering withdrawing support and CPM leaders have told the Hindustan Times, and I quote, that the CPI position is absolutely absurd and ridiculous. I don't know why they use these two words. Should I pay back the compliment? That is not the basis on which I discuss with my own party colleagues. And when I mean party colleagues, I mean colleagues of other left parties also. I think, you see, the time will come for us to sit together and discuss it seriously. At the present moment, it is only my view, the view of my party. You're pushing the left to sit down and discuss this seriously. In any case, the left generally meets together to discuss serious political questions. But I'll tell you the problem. Huh? That, in fact, by opening up the question of whether the left should withdraw support to the UPA government, you've created a problem for the left. Because the RSP and the forward bloc have gone public. They say they agree with you. They believe in what you're saying. The CPM doesn't. So um, is the left divided? Unfortunately, I have not read their statements. To be Can I quote it to you? I I'm quoting to you. Manoj Bhattacharya of the RSP. It is time we think of an alternative instead of continuing our support indefinitely. Deva Batra Biswas, General Secretary, Forward Bloc. There should be an emergency meeting of the four left parties. The Congress is continuously ignoring our demands. We must take some action. They are with you. The CPM is not. Is the left divided? You see, it is not a question of votes. Three and one. It is not a question. When we sit together, you see, we discuss seriously the political question. And obviously, when we have to take the decision, we will consider everything, including what exactly will be the alternative. The reason I put this to you is that on paper, there are four left parties supporting the government from outside. Three of them believe the time has come to reconsider. The CPM is the one that believes opposite. Use is the CPM using its size to dominate the other three and no. to push its line? No, I don't think. I'm not accusing them of pushing through any line. I think that they are also having an opinion. And when we are discussing, we will discuss both the opinions. When will this discussion happen? No, it will not take place before the presidential election, I tell you, because people are busy with the UP elections. And immediately after that, the main political question that will be uh, facing this, uh, that this country will be facing so will you're be the saying, presidential election. So you're saying to me that once the UP elections are over and once the presidential election is over, the left parties will sit down and seriously consider the question seriously of... Seriously consider. I don't think... I don't say that they will accept what I'm saying. But they will seriously consider it. Seriously. They ought to. They and ought will to. you, in the company of the RSP and the forward bloc, seriously push your line? As I am telling you, it's not a question of a vote. It's not a question of three versus one or any such it's thing. It's a question of persuading. It is a question of persuading, arguing, discussing. But will you push your line strenuously? What, why else am I saying this publicly? Otherwise, I would have kept it to myself. Let me put this to you. At the moment, the left parties are supporting the government on the basis of the common minimum program. But since you believe the government is not genuine about implementing the common minimum program, what are the chances that you might change the nature of your support and make it issue-bound support instead? You don't put anything in my mouth. I have not said it whether the change will be issue-based support. We will discuss all these questions, including if there is an alternative, is there? What the consequences will be if we withdraw support? Will it be of benefit, you see, to the BJP, as some people think? Can I ask one question? Therefore, the possibility that you might switch to issue-based support is one item you will discuss. There are so many alternatives. There are so but many this is options. One of them. This is one of them. Maybe, maybe. I'm not saying so. But maybe. You are saying so. But maybe. Maybe. In the meantime, what has happened to the UPA Left Coordination Committee? It hasn't met since November. Almost seven months have passed. Has it been mothballed? You seem to be monitoring its meeting very much. I don't remember how many months, but it's a long time that it has not met. There has not been any issue on which to discuss. 
The last time I remember, you see, when we met. Are you saying there's no need for it, or are you saying it should have met, but it hasn't met? An occasion has not arisen, you see, where we can sit together and discuss and come to any conclusion. Is there, therefore, no longer a functioning mechanism for the left to talk to the government it supports? There is a mechanism. Its functioning, you see, is uh, rather questionable, I must say. I'm not prepared to sit in a meeting and hear Chidambaram lecturing to me. What the benefits to the country will be and to a section of the people will be, you see, if the pension funds are put in the... So rather than have to listen to Chidambaram's lectures, uh -huh. it's better that the UPA left shouldn't meet. It's not worthwhile, you see, just to hear these lectures. We know economics as much as he does. But if he has a certain viewpoint and if he has certain policies to push through, he's welcome to push through, but not with our support, obviously. You don't like Mr. Chidambaram, do you? No, no. Personally, he's a likable man. But as finance minister, you don't like him. As finance minister, I don't think he has been doing this country proud. I think he has been helping only a coterie, a section of people. You see. So he's the wrong finance minister for this government? I do not know who will be the best finance minister, but unless these policies are changed, Whoever be the individual, it won't matter. I am not commenting on an individual. You're commenting on the policies? On the policies. And you don't like Chidambaram because of the policies he stands for? He stands for. And I think that our Prime Minister, with all the respect to him, is in fact blessing those policies. I think so. He can't avoid blame. He can't avoid blame, therefore. Let's take a break, Mr. Bharatan. I want to come back and talk to you about the critical question, who should be the next President of India? We'll be back in a moment's time. Stick with us. Welcome back to Devil's Advocate and an interview with the General Secretary of the Communist Party of India, A.B. Bharadhan. Mr. Bharadhan, let's turn to the question, who should be the next President of India? A.P.J. Abdul Kalam has hinted that were he to be offered a second term, he might be willing to accept it. As General Secretary of the CPI, do you think Dr. Kalam deserves a second term as President of India? Well, he's a good man, he has been a good president, but I don't think that a second term for him, you see, is essential. This country does not lack persons who, see, who have all the qualities of being a president. There are so many to choose from. So you're saying the time has come to find another person? Another person, right. The CPI, therefore, does not support any campaign to re-nominate Dr. Kalam. Any special campaign to see that he must get a second term, I don't think is called for. That's all. It, it's meaning without any disrespect to him. By tradition in India, hmm. The vice president has usually gone on to become president. Would you support the candidature of the present vice president? I, I join issue with you there. There has been no such tradition. It's happened more often than it's not happened. There have been very deserving vice presidents, very eminent persons. But 80% of vice presidents have gone on to become president. Maybe that was, you see, the easy way out. So part. let me come back to my question. Would you support the candidature of Mr. Shakhavat? You see, why should we discuss it so publicly like that? I think the time has come for the political parties to think about something. All were waiting for the UP election because the UP election... I'll, I'll, I'll take up your point about the UP election in a moment. When you say, why should we discuss it publicly, are you hesitating in saying you do support his candidature or are you hesitating in saying you don't? No, let me tell you. you see, as far as I'm concerned, I think that the president of this country should be one who, first of all, is secular. Hold secular views, not just personally, and but second, comes from... And second? Comes from, secondly, somebody, you see, who has democratic, progressive views. Does this rule out Mr. Shakhavat in your eyes? On the question of secularism, you say he does belong to the BJP. He has never denied it. And you, therefore, would not prefer him to be the next president? I don't think, you see, that qualifies him to be the president. So he, too, is ruled out? That smile says it all. The newspapers say... It seems preferred... to me that it is you who is making the choice, not I. The newspapers say that your preferred candidate would be the speaker, Mr. Somnath Chatterjee. Can you confirm that? No. No, I, you can't? I, I haven't said that. Somebody asked me, a person like you, you say on interview, asked me, how if he becomes the president? I say, he'll be a welcome man. But that doesn't mean that I proposed him. You would welcome him as president, but you're not proposing his name as I'm president? Because I tell you, as far as these names are concerned, I don't think they should be bandied about like that. Are you there should be some serious thinking by parties are whose votes will determine the question. Are you hesitating to say that you would like to see Mr. Chatterjee as president and would nominate him because of the simple reason that if you say it, you could end up having the opposite effect? Is that why you're hesitating? Should I say why? You have said some reasons. Maybe there are others 
also what are the other i reasons? think that the president's post is such a serious post that one should not just go on discussing it you see in the course of an interview the political parties that matter have yet to make up their mind let them make up their mind except for the fact that this is the headship of the country mm. and in a democracy the country has a right to know whose names are being canvassed and why they will come to know it is important that a debate should be created so let me come back you say you would like to see mr chatterjee is no, no, president said, but you won't nominate him i am not nominating him i am the last person who can nominate my party doesn't have that strength to nominate or suggest but i think that parties which do matter and have lot of votes are the congress the bjp and so on let us see what candidates they propose one or two quick questions have you discussed at any point with mr chatterjee the possibility of his candidature not in the least i haven't met him at all do you think he would be averse to standing or would he be willing to stand i today today itself you see i read an interview i agree with that interview he said that anybody whose name is canvassed like that or who offered a post will consider it one of the greatest honor so does that suggest to you that he is willing to be a candidate no no he is that is to say he is not going to refuse if somebody he won't i can refuse. understand that but that does not mean that somebody has proposed his name have the left parties between themselves discussed the candidature of mr chatterjee not Chatterty? at all the first party that should consider is he does belong to the cpim so if anybody has to consider that question first it has to be the cpm has the cpm taken the initiative as yet i don't think that they have taken you're waiting for them to do so no no not exactly this name maybe any other maybe have you any other. discussed the candidature of mr chatterjee either with the prime minister or with sonia gandhi not in the least does it worry you that even if you can get the left parties as a whole and congress and maybe the up as well to support the candidature of mr chatterjee the bjp is almost definitely going to oppose it does that worry you they should also be worried that if they propose a name we may not be agreeable we may not agree to that name as i said you see the quality has to be he has to be secular he has to be progressive minded a democrat of high standing a man who see who respects the constitution of the country okay a moment ago you said to me that it's quite likely that after the up election results come out the major blocks in our politics may not have enough support to ensure their own individual preferred candidate that is when they will have to come and discuss with us and they will have to then agree yes. on a compromise everyone will have to agree on a compromise yeah quite right at that point what's the likelihood that dr manmohan singh's name may be put forward it makes me laugh he is very well entrenched as a prime minister but since you have so many objections to the policies he stands for might not this be a good way of elevating him and bringing in another person no, and doing it with dignity i don't think you see that his name is being considered but after he is there be, in on a chair were it to be considered would the left have reservations or would you see this as a rather clever and effective way of removing him from the but why should we discuss his, doing it with dignity why should we discuss his name at all when you see nobody has suggested it it was mentioned in the newspapers the other day So nowadays the newspapers decide our politics. That's how ideas and... get floated. Huh? What about one other question? This is a highly symbolic job. We've had Muslims, we've had Dalits, we've had six as presidents of India. Do you think in the 60th year of India's independence, it's time to have a woman president? Not a bad idea. Last time we tried it, if you remember. Who would you suggest as the candidate if you wanted a woman? I. There are so many competent women. but you can't think of one uh, but as i said the suggestion is to come from the bigger party but you think parties. this is the right time in the 60th year of independence to have a woman i will welcome it if a woman's name is put forward would you try and persuade the other left parties to welcome it as well i will take the hint i will suggest to them and as you know we did will you take captain lakshmi sahgal's name was suggested by us will you also take the matter up with the upa and sonia gandhi in particular I don't know Sonia Gandhi in particular but we talked and discussed with the parties So you might take it up we might Mr Bardhan a pleasure talking to you on devil's advocate <laughs> I will take up the question of a woman president